Today we talk about the importance of nasopharynx in relation to middle ear. Usually the traditional anatomy divides uh, the upper respiratory tract in organs, in really big divisions, but it's not like that. All the different parts of the upper respiratory tracts are really connected and each one has a, a impact, an impact on all the others, in particular the uh, nasopharynx. The link between nasopharynx and otitis media has been known in, uh, I would say, in the last uh, 30 years. Uh, because uh, we know about the role of adenoids, which can be a reservoir of bacteria aggregated in biofilms, and is also the site of the opening of the eustachian tube, which connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx. But I think that one of the main problems is that we have really to, to focus on the presence of bacteria in the nasopharynx. Since, uh, I would say, 20 years ago, uh, it, was, it became clear that the child, even the young child, uh, the infant actually, who is a carrier of pathogens, respiratory pathogens in the nasopharynx, is at risk of recurrent acute otitis media. What do I mean? Which are these, uh, what are these otopathogens? I, I am talking about what we call the infernal trio, which means uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Moraxella catarralis, and sometimes is also defined as infernal poker because uh, group A Streptococcus uh, just uh, is uh, included in this uh, uh, group of autopathogens. But uh, the reality is not only that. In the last few years, we have known more about the nasopharyngeal microbiota or microbiome, uh, as you want to, to, to define it, which is the big amount, the big word of bacteria, good bacteria, who ina which inhabit the nasopharynx. We know that an imbalance in the um, in the microbiota in the nasopharynx means uh, disease or means health. So our effort uh, has to be, have to be focused on maintaining the health of the nasal microbiota. Actually, we know that the microbiota is uh, um, impaired and in some way disrupted in children with community-acquired pneumonia, in children with rhinosinusitis, or even in, uh, in children with, uh, um, well, we know very well about gastrointestinal microbiota, but really the, the new way of thinking about microbiota is to focus on the nasal one. As regards to otitis media, the data are really very, very scarce, but we know that the children with uh, otitis media have a microbiota with less commensal pathogens, which are the good pathogens, than the children with acute otitis media. What can we do? We have to improve, we have to uh, really uh, make greater the number of good pathogens, and I uh, mean the alpha hemolytic streptococci, and, uh, and really uh, try to uh, save them in order to counterbalance the role of the pathogenic ones. One, mm, one mean, one method to, to help this uh, colonization of good pathogen is to use good pathogens delivered by spray into the nose, and uh, I refer to Streptococcus salivarius 24 SMB, which, is, uh, uh, which has been used in a uh, study uh, recently, and uh, which has been demonstrated to be able in children colonized by these good pathogens was, uh, as I said, was demonstrated to be able to reduce 
the risk of new episodes of uh, acute otitis media. So uh, the, the future is ours, but uh, first of all, we have to save the good pathogens, if possible, to give good pathogens in addition.